Hello and welcome. You're watching the NHRDN Summit on HR Shared Services and Technology on ET Now. Now we all know that HR Shared Services is not a new concept, but it is in fact a relatively lesser known concept in India. Over the next half an hour, we will take you through the summit where panelists, delegates and HR representatives from across the country discussed the importance of the same. Take a look at the illustrious inaugural session of the third NHRDN Summit. Four or five years ago, there was not even a single program in India which was around shared services, not even one. So the first program in India happened three or four years ago. Before that, there was no such program. Uh, typically, the market size was almost negligible. There were hardly any service providers who were giving HR shared services, related services, or were even talking about it. If you remember, the total market size was negligible. Uh, Today, when we look at, there is a program happening, which is the third edition. There are about 200 people. There are 25 speakers which are coming from all over the country, uh, who's who in this field. And at that time, it was considered a very transactional uh, work or transactional role. And today, if you look at, it has become a part of the HR's strategic agenda. Any HR transformation which is taken up in India, it is very unlikely that shared services or HR technology will not be a part of it. Best part of this program, and we were again discussing that, you know, we get here a lot of people who are not, not the CHROs per se, but who are making CHROs successful. So you are the operating heads who are generally not visible. So this is the conference to celebrate people who make HR heads celebrate. So it is great to have each one of you in this audience, and I hope you will enjoy the program. And uh, without taking much further much time, and I'm going to request um, our first speaker, or I should say the keynote, uh, uh, you know, Nathan, to please come here and share his views, uh, and then I'm going to request the next speakers. So over to you, Nathan. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you so much. The demands that are being placed on human resources is, is very different from the ones that we have seen in the past. New businesses are coming in. We are looking at uh, older businesses are getting far more complex. Today's technology has turned the world completely upside down. And in all this, don't forget that India is being seen as an ocean of talent. And every organization from outside the world, global organizations, are all making a beeline here to India. And there's an expectation. But I'm just going to leave you with this thought. As much as we talk about the transformation that is happening in organizations, ask yourselves, what transformation is going on within you? How can we be better professionals? How can we tell a story? A story that is so compelling that the person who comes up and says, I see what you do. All the fuzziness of the past is given birth to data driven analytics, and you can say this is exactly what we are doing. Thank you very much. So I'm going to request uh, uh, Rajiv to go next, and I call it the purest view. You've heard a practitioner, you will hear an academician, but in between the, uh, the purest view, uh, the way they look at the market, the way they look at the modeling of shared services and learnings. So over sure. to you, Rajiv. Sure. Thank you. Uh, while people have, uh, you know, uh, while there are trends of having, uh, you know, standalone HR shared services, but these are moving into integrated shared services. So people are finding that, uh, you know, so you initially probably had the HR somewhere separately, you had the finance somewhere separately, but then there were certain functions or so certain, you know, processes which required, you know, a handshake and a, and a you know, kind of a interaction between the two, and you found it uh, easier to, you know, bring them together. So that's something which is happening. There are also uh, also several work which is uh, which is high value, and of course, I think this is a you know hackneyed theme about HR analytics and so on, which is happening. But I think it's going a little beyond that, and the kind of capabilities which are required in this, the kind of profile of people who are joining the shared services, that is really changing quite a lot. And even if you look at things like reporting, you know, where does it report to? Where does the shared services report to? It's, it no longer goes into uh, maybe a mid-tier, you know, leader in the firm, but it's going right up to the top, and that is indicative of what is going on in some of these, you know, shared services. So I think we, with that, we come to the end of this, and uh, I'll hand over the baton to, uh, to Pankaj for the next speakers and so on. Thank you very, very much. Thanks.
Uh, now I'm going to go to the to the teacher, the guru, and uh, Dr. Jitender, and and I would love to hear and we all uh, your views on this subject. So over to you, Dr. Das. Thank you. Now, when I looked at this uh, shared services, uh, because I was here last year also, uh, you you know being you know you need to do a lot of research to figure out what this is all about. And what struck me in the beginning was that the moment you talk of uh, this as a shared service, uh, the fundamental meaning of this is that there is some function which is shared across different units in the uh, organization. Uh, the shared services was actually first quoted in a HR book uh, titled uh, HR Champions by an author called Ulrich. And in that, uh, he did talk of a lot of futuristic things as to how the HR function will change. And then that's how I started uh, picking up uh, things from there. So whenever you talk of uh, a centralization and in a way uh, uh, shared services, which will come to now, uh, this is a, why it was being done. Now, typically, these were done by the corporates. Now, corporates have one fundamental objective, to cut costs and maximize profit. So when you do these kinds of things, uh, the costs were being reduced. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Das. And we have um, it's Das uh, Rajesh Ranjan, who's the partner uh, and, and the global head for their business services vertical, especially flown in for this event here. So thank you very much, Rajesh. I request you to please join us here. While the global HR outsourcing market is around $30 billion, roughly 10% is Asia Pacific. But when, when, when we look at the growth numbers, you know, the growth numbers in Asia Pacific is double of uh, what we are seeing globally. Uh, more importantly, if you peel the onion and look at the emerging markets within, uh, within uh, you know, APAC, that number goes up by four times, five times, right? So clearly there's a significant growth uh, that is taking place uh, in terms of how organizations are using HR outsourcing as a way to uh, you know, manage and deliver better HR services and quite frankly respond to business needs. The driver behind this adoption is quite different. So while in the West, you will see HR outsourcing as a primary tool to reduce cost in, in Asia Pacific, and more importantly, again, in the emerging market, we saw that as a tool to create a more agile and scalable HR delivery model, which can respond to the business demands quickly, and at the same time, improve, engage employee experience. Uh, so of course, in the Western model, since it was kind of uh, based on uh, cost reduction, so there are a lot of SLAs and KPIs which are based on efficiency metrics. But, you know, uh, in the emerging markets, what we are seeing is, you know, clearly it is also, you know, again, some of those things are being tracked, but, you know, a lot of emphasis is being given on what we call the business outcome. I'm going to hand over the mic um, for the last part, which is the word of thanks to our Director General Kamal Singh, uh, who's conceptualized this program. So over to you, Kamal. This is the new concept that is catching up in India. Globally, it has already caught up. And it is being viewed as one of the key differentiator or game changer as we move on to compete globally. With that thought, we had brought this entire design and summit, the way it has been put together, you see the best of the best speaker, the best of the best practitioner who have done it and who have really uh, made it as differentiator in their own companies. I can say with pride, Mr. Rajesh Tripathi, and, uh, and you will see as you move on, this concept will further grow as we progress. <laughs> uh, finally, dear gentlemen, I would like to thank each one of you for taking time out to uh, really uh, make the best out of the offering that NHRDN has given you and it is your presence and participation that tomorrow we will take a note that how summit it was. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now who knew shared services had covered such a ground in our country? We will take a short break at this point but do come back to listen into leading HR professionals talking about implementing shared services in their companies. Welcome back, you're watching the NHRDN Summit on ET Now. 
Now, human resource management is one of the most important functions of an organization and HR shared services can definitely aid for a more efficient running of any company. In the next panel, leading HR professionals from some of India's biggest companies share their experiences on collaborating with shared service providers. The HR functions are not just to address employee needs about salaries and leaves. Human resource management works like a cog that enables smooth functioning of the corporate machinery. Shared services as a concept to aid that effort was discussed in this panel titled Experience and Collaboration with panelists emphasizing on the challenges that they faced while implementing the HR shared services model for their large companies. When we implement shared services, there is service for all employees and there is a platinum service for seniors. And very often we find that seniors in the organizations might have a buy into a change management initiative, but you know, unlike leading from the top, are not willing to pick up the phone and talk to a shared service center. The call goes to somebody in HR. I'd love to hear about your experience on this as well. The CEO and the leadership looks at overall costs and arbitrage, number one, because you have a terrific advantage through whatever processes you build. The HR fraternity looks at it, which, is much, which has always been qualitative in nature, looks at process consistency and the HR employee experience bit of it. From an employee standpoint, it's purely what has changed for me? Is it turnaround time? Is it efficiency? Am I able to relate better? And aspects in terms of a final, final uh, employee engagement aspect of it, which they can touch and feel. It's not what you measure, but which they they possibly give more on the social platform rather than giving it internally through your engagement service. I guess those are some of the pulse that you can feel in terms of the organizational trajectory and you can measure some of these aspects and bring the entire story together. You know, just because somebody sitting at the top feels that, you know, now the time is ripe to have a shared service, but this is, question is going to be asked by all stakeholders. And believe me, they are very, very uh, uh, relevant questions which they ask. Which are the areas where, you know, collaboration plays a very, very important part? Now, the way we went about it, standardized all HR processes across AFS. 16 different locations, nine businesses. It was a nightmare. It took us five to six months. A simple process like induction used to be carried out in 60 different ways, in 16 different locations, because every department had innovated its own induction process. So after standardization, it's centralization. And fine, it looks all good on papers, but at the end of the day, shared services is all about collaboration. I don't think panelists are now debating whether there should be shared services. So I think the shift is now about how do you make shared services more effective? How do you give it a, a human face? How do you make sure that you know, the customer is uh, you know, not left feeling like they're speaking to somebody who doesn't relate to them or doesn't empathize with them? After an intense session, it was time to take the conversation forward. The second panel discussion of the day was titled Invigorating the Role of HR Business Partners Through Shared Services and Technology. Focusing on the symbiotic relationship between shared service providers, HR business partners and technology, the discussion tried to dissect how this can greatly aid the employee experience. How are you able to actually break that behavior and how all these three functions like COE, shared service and business partner can work collaboratively. Believe me, first develop a norm in your company that it is important to rotate. In fact, I'm recommending to all of you that do not allow any one functionary to get into the other function without previous experience in one of them. So an HR partner should not be somebody who never had an experience in shared service. We should, A, first of all, collectively intermarry within the castes and develop a castless society. And we should have the norm that it is okay to marry within the caste. So that's the only answer to this. I think beyond, of course, the rotation, you got to put sometimes your best people in those because sometimes roles are made by the people in them. 
it's a vicious cycle if you pick the role and you put someone you know you've got nothing else to do with or something that is what the role will become right and that is the role of the hr business partner the leader to make those roles aspirational move people around right people because it is such a fundamental lever of delivering the entire hr portfolio right when at work as professionals we are constantly looking at okay i'm in the coe what's my coe core team looking like what's what's my peer group like and let's look at the shared services and what's my peer group in that shared services like i don't think i equate myself irrespective of what the organization says i think probably in my head i'm superior to this person in shared services we got to break that barrier and i think it's an incredibly important role that an hr leader needs to play to break that barrier and the shared services lead needs to play to break that barrier by renewing the talent and making it important that a management trainee from a b school top rated b school comes and works in the shared services and it's as important to work there as it is important to work elsewhere in the organization in any other part of the hr function so we got to break you know these organization barriers that are kind of created mostly through mindset barriers that we carry in our minds hr still at the end of the day in spite of its three constituents of hr partners bps as they call uh, the shared service providers and the coes the centers of excellence for the business client there is only one hr and our ability to come together is what will define the effectiveness of the hr function It's time for another short break but on the other side we have two more power packed discussions on the role of HR shared services for companies we will also give you a glimpse of the exhibition held to showcase the leading HR shared service providers in the country Welcome back we are showcasing the third NHRD and summit on ET now this year's theme was hr shared services and technology and the next panel discussion recounts individual experiences of senior hr professionals on taking their companies to newer heights the third panel discussion of the day was held to highlight the individual paths that the chief human resource officers of the companies had to take to successfully implement shared services in india titled the journey from efficiency to experience panelists spoke about the challenges they faced especially cultural to execute the concept of shared services in hr in their terms question that i have to all three of you all is that you know hindsight is 2020 you all have been through this journey you been through the ups and downs and all if when you look back there's one thing that you'd say now if i had the opportunity i would not do or i would do in this journey what would that be i think if you if you want my answer i'll refer back to slide uh, probably i don't think any one of us will have a choice to go back to the let's say you know the, the seven years or 10 years back uh, you know direction uh what we can do do is in fact you know it's not a casting stone you can always balance it out correct because this question versus the you know uh, human spurs versus e spurs correct that there's always a e today and people appreciate that but i think sometimes there are some issues where you also require the conversational you know kind of offerings which you also offer as a platform and if people are aware of it that you can actually go to a uh, human you know qx than the e spurs i think they also appreciate that so i don't think we will have to go back we will have to only go further because we are scaling up okay on a lighter note uh, if i were to go back in the time machine uh, I, i don't think i would have joined shared services that's on a lighter note because it is quite uh, stressful it can be a, a very painful experience but uh, certainly of course as they say uh, you have to stand up to the challenge and run to it on a lighter note but on a serious note uh, my experience is that uh, you know we talk about when you're doing transitioning the shift and lift or the lift and shift so if i were to start all over again i would rather do it in pilot phases with a few companies few uh, businesses master it and then go to the next phase rather than taking everything and trying to do it and when you're trying to acquire as i said i would rather first standardize processes standardize systems harmonize all the compensation benefits then bring them into the larger organization which you call the shift and then the lift we have been following in some cases the lift and then trying to do clean up and build the uh, on the fly it's been a big challenge so i that is what something i would have done differently 
I'll just answer this. What is it that uh, we would like to do differently and what has been our one singular key learning? The big ticket learning which we had is uh, the employee engagement should have happened a little earlier. Because ultimately, if you look at it, HR Shared Services is all about targeting employees here, our internal employees. In this case, we had designed the value proposition. We started off by working on process uh, structures. Then we worked on processes. And after that, we went down to employees, telling them, see, this is what we have. And this is what you need to do. So had we engaged them,